Hello and welcome back. Today we're going to take a look at the Lucene.net search engine library. The Lucene.net is a class-per-class, API-per-API, algorithmic port of the Java-based library. If you're not familiar with Lucene, it's a highly performance, highly full-featured text search engine, which can be used to allow you to quickly and easily integrate search engine capability within your application. In this episode, we're going to start off with the basics. We're going to learn how you can get a simple example of Lucene up and running, at the end of the episode, you should have enough information to be able to incorporate the very basic usage scenario of Lucene. Here's the Lucene.net website. Like I said, Lucene is a port of the Java library. And because of that, you will find very little technical documentation on how to use the .NET variant. If you want to find documentation on Lucene, read the Java documents. The library and the API is exactly the same, so you should have no problem translating. Also, Lucene is not a binary release. It's only available right now as uh, source code. So you do need to download the source code from Subversion and compile it. Here's the URL that I'm using and the version I'm using, which is 2.3.2. .2. I've already gone ahead and I've downloaded the source and I've already compiled it. So we won't go ahead and take the time to do that here today. Once you have the binaries installed, all you have to do is add a reference to Lucene.net library and you'll have everything you needed within your application to start coding. Now, Lucene is a database search engine, but it is not tied directly to your database or your schema. And that is because what you need to do to use Lucene is load data in any format, in any, in any structure that meets your actual needs. Now, Lucene is a text-based engine, so you cannot put in anything other than strings, so no dates, no ints, no floating point values, anything, just rings. I've already gone ahead and I've created a, a mock repository here. This repository will mimic me loading data out of my database so I can go ahead and create my Lucene search engine and set up my indexer and all that fun stuff. And you can see it returns things as an episode index, and that episode index is just a simple class that has three properties. So let's go ahead and get started. Now, the first thing I want to do today is, you know, we're going to go real slow. And the first thing, I'm going to go ahead and create an instance of my repository because I'll go ahead and need that to grab my data to load my index up. Now, the next thing we need to look at when you're using Lucene is what, how am I going to store this index data? Am I going to store it physically on disk? Am I going to store it in RAM? There's multiple different scenarios here. I'm going to go ahead and use the RAM directory. And this will store all my index information in memory, and that will be enough to meet my immediate needs. Now, once you've created your directory and where you're going to store it, you need to figure out how you're going to actually create your indexes. And this is done by creating an index writer. I'm going to create an index writer, and you see there's quite a bit in terms of overloads here. I'm going to push my RAM directory. And then it's asking me for an analyzer, auto commit, uh, various different things. I'm going to go ahead and put in an analyzer here. And we're going to have to create our instance of an analyzer here. Now, the analyzer I'm going to use is the standard analyzer. The analyzer is what is needed to actually cr uh, work off of an index. Now that I've created my directory, my indexer, and my analyzer, it's actually time to go ahead and load up the index with all my data information. So let's go ahead and do that now. Now, in order to create my first index, what I want to do is I want to grab all the data that's in my repository. So let's go ahead and get this information out. And once I have this data, I want to be able to build up what is basically my search document, and then that search document will become part of my index. So let's do in four each. And we'll loop over all the data that's being pulled back from our mock repository. Now, in order to start creating up a document, and again, this document is what you're going to add to your index writer, which becomes part of your searchable data, you need to create an instance of a new document. And then as part of the document, you want to do document.add, and I want to add a new field. And when I do new field, you'll see there's multiple overloads here. I want to give my field a name, so I'm going to create an ID field. This is, allows me to search by given ID. 
and we're going to say index episode ID dot two string. Now, if I don't add this dot two string here, it'll give me runtime error. And then, how do I want to store this? Do I actually want to store this value as a discrete data point within my index? Yes, I do. And then last, how do I want to index this? Tokenized, non-tokenized, how do I want to do it? I don't want to tokenize it. And basically because it's an ID, it's a single value. If I tokenize it, Lucene would attempt to pull out the various uh, individual words. And I don't really want that. So let's go ahead and copy and paste this a few times. I'm going to create another field here called name, another one called author. Let's replace this author. I want to store both of those, but in these cases, I do actually want to tokenize. these values. Now that I've created out what my document is and I've described all the individual fields on my document, I want to add this to my index writer. I've now added this, this row of data into my index writer so I can later analyze it. And I'm going to do this over and over again for each individual value in our, in our result set. Now I need to do a couple things here. I need to index writer, optimize, I'm going to flush this, and then go ahead and close everything out. This now I've set up my index. What I want to do now is set up some kind of capabilities to perform a search on my index. This is something you would do here in the background and would be done on some kind of interval. Um, because again, since Lucene's not tied directly to your database, you need to repopulate the indexes, rebuild them over and over again. So now that we built our index, let's go ahead and create a search screen. So I'm gonna go ahead and do search. And let's do NANT. Pretty straightforward. We're gonna search for anything that has the word NANT in it. Now in order to query uh, with Lucene, you need to create a new query parser. And query parser has a few values in string and analyzer. What this string is, it's saying if I do not provide a given field uh, as an enumerated value within my search, which one do I want to search with by default? And I'm going to say name. And then I need to provide in my analyzer that was used to create my index. So we're going we're to create our query here. Now that we have our query, we need to create something that allows us to search our index. So we'll do index searcher. And it's asking for an index reader, a directory, or a path. Now the directory will be our RAM directory that we created right here. So we have our index searcher. And now we just need to perform our search. So let's do index searcher dot search and provide my query. Oops, parser. And this will return something called hit. I'm getting this little squiggly here. Why am I getting this squiggly? Ah, forgot to actually call parse and provide a search screen. If I don't do that, I don't get the right value back, and then, well, nothing seems to work quite right. Now, once I have my, my data back, I need to see if I have anything. Now, hits is not enumerable, so what you're going to want to do is just do a for loop over it. We'll do i, where i is less than hits.length. And then for our example here, we'll just do debug.writeline. And we're just going to do hits.doc, our... Uh, our element, our row, and our array. Dot get, and then we're going to get a field or get here, or we could just do get, and we'll do get, and we'll give the name, name. So I'm going to get the name field. We've now created enough. We've created to search with Lucene. We've created a RAM directory, which will store all of our index information uh, in memory. We've created our indexer and our analyzer. 
we then gone through and built up all the information we want to store. Then once we've done that, we've created our query information, and we've actually then just done a loop over our information. So let's go ahead and run this. Now if all goes well, I should get down to right here, and I have. Let's see if I have any hits. I do, I have eight hits. And if I F5 over this and look in my output window down here, you'll see that I found various things that start with, I have the word NANT in them, creating function with NANT, learning NANT, building NANT scripts, all that fun stuff. So as you can see, using Lucene is pretty straightforward, pretty easy when you want to start using it from the basic usage scenarios. In future episodes, we'll take a look at how to use Lucene uh, in more complicated ways. We'll take a look at how to do more complicated searching um, you know, by using ands and ors and different, uh, different wild cards and things like that. But for now, they'll get you up and running. should allow you to very easily and very quickly search data within your application using the Lucene.net library. Well, I hope you learned something. Until next time.